Welcome to The Daily Swap. Welcome everybody to the Daily Mother Swole, number 14. I love that intro. I just have a good time with that. That's my favorite. That's my thing. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. I am on live on Periscope. I'm live on Busker. And what I'm talking about today is personal training, the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you don't know anything about me, I'm gonna introduce myself a little bit. My name is Dash, AKA Swole Normous. I am a fitness expert. And what that means is I have a street smarts and I have book smarts. I have a degree in exercise science. I have a CSCS, which is a top certification that you can only get when you have a four year degree. I taught for the National Academy of Sports Medicine for four years. Uh, which is one of the top certifying country, uh, certifi certifications in the country. And I have all their certifications. I also teach and done videos for Beachbody, P90X Insanity. I teach their certifications and their workshops. I teach my own workshops. I'm doing one on June 4th called You Don't Know Squat, which is all about squats. So I will be broadcasting that as well. And if you're local in Florida, contact me and I can give you the information on how to attend. And that's on June 4th. So. Let's get into the fat, personal training, and then I'll take some questions at the end. I'm gonna skim over some topics and go into it, but I really want some questions and interaction, so make sure that you fire away once we get there. The personal training industry in the United States especially is very, very wide open. So the entry level for personal training is pretty much whatever the gym decides or whatever an insuring company decides they want to have as their requirements to have their insurance. So personal training is pretty much up to the discretion of the employer. Now, most people require a certification just because if you have a certification, there's a minimal, uh, a minimal competency. And what that means is that a person, if they pass a test or they have a certain minimal knowledge for personal training, okay? And that's important. That's important to understand that someone has a minimum understanding or minimum knowledge or minimum awareness of personal training and what fitness is all about. So that's one of the main reasons for a certification. That being said, there are many different certifications. There are ones that are NCCA accredited, which are higher level certifications that have gone through a more rigorous uh, vetting pro uh, process to be considered a personal training certification. So those that are just joining now, welcome and I'm on Periscope and I'm also on Busker. So those of you that want to catch this live in the future, those are the two venues that I broadcast. Moving forward, that being said, the entry level for these certifications depend. The Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist certification is from the NSCA, which is the National, a National uh, Strength and Conditioning Association. And that requirement or that certification requires a four-year bachelor's degree period. It doesn't have to be in the science field, but it has to be a four-year degree. So there's a minimum requirement for education. Most certifications do not require a college degree. Most certifications do not require uh, a high school diploma necessarily. So there's a lower entry level or a decreased bar entry level into personal fitness. And I'm not sure, I'm not aware of what it's like for other countries. This is just strictly the United States. It's strictly my experience. If there's anything that you're like, oh, it's so different over here in, in the UK, it's different over here in Australia. It very well could be. It very well likely is. Uh, just understand that in the United States, there's really no regulation. So in order to get uh, certified or to get insurance in the United States with a certified personal trainer, you can get insurance depending, depending on what the insurance company requires. Now, if they require you to have the NASM certification, that's what you need to get covered by insurance. So insurance, as you know, you can cover your butt. I could get my beard insured if I pay enough money, but it's just what requirements the insurance gets. So all insurance is a reimbursement. So it's, it really comes down to what the insurance company requires you to have. So that's more individualized. Um, am I ACSM? No, I am not, but that is another top tier certification. And we'll get into how many certifications you really need uh, towards the end of the show. That's a great comment. That's a good one. That's a good pickup. So I'm glad you have that background information, that background knowledge. 
um, American College of Sports Medicine, that's the ACSM, that's another top tier certification. So there's a lot of certifications out there. And some of the problems, and let's just get into the certification, let's get into the entry level certification, let's get into the, you know, what it takes to get certified. So these different certifications, some of them require, you have to go to a testing center. You have to go to a testing center and you have to um, actually take a test on a computer and you have cameras and you have, you know, and it's restricted access. So you have to have the information knowledgeable. Most certifications do not require hands-on. So first off, big problem, right? You can go, you can be someone that goes home, reads a book, studies, goes, takes a test, and then you're a certified personal trainer. You know, you might also need, a lot of certifications required you to be CPR certified. So right off the bat, that's really sketchy that a personal trainer does not have to have, and this is important, a lot of people don't know this, a personal trainer to get certified, I'll make this very clear, a personal trainer, not all personal trainers do this, a personal trainer to get certified does not need to have ever stepped foot in a gym. Do you like that? Do you like that? Do you like the fact that a personal trainer does not need to step foot into a gym? A personal trainer does not need to step foot into a gym to get certified. You could be a certified personal trainer and never have worked out in your life. I'll let that sink in a little bit. You could be a personal trainer and have never lifted a weight. That's scary because you could be a good test taker. Stephen Hawking could be a freaking personal trainer. All you gotta do is take a test and get CPR certified. Extreme case, but totally true. That is the problem and that is the rift because you have a lot of a big entry level. Even if you're a doctor, let's say you're a doctor, let's say you're a, not a great doctor, but let's say you're a low level doctor. What happened? You still have to pass the boards, you know? What do they call the person that finishes last in their class in medical school? Doctor. They call him doctor, a personal trainer. Everyone and their sister, brother, mother, cousin is a personal trainer. Oh yeah, so-and-so is a personal trainer. Oh, so-and-so is a personal trainer. The field is diluted. You have high level and highly educated personal trainers you know, grouped in the same class with people that don't even have a certification. Technically, if someone wants you to come to the house and train them, you don't have to be certified. You don't have to be certified to train someone in their, in their condo. You're at risk if they sue you or if there's an injury and you're not certified or you're not insured, you could be at risk and you could be culpable in court if it goes that far. But if you're not certified, it doesn't matter. You can still train someone if you're not certified. And guess what? That doesn't mean that you don't know what you're talking about. That doesn't mean that you're a bad personal trainer. Just because you're not certified, just because you don't have a piece of paper, just because you didn't pass a test, doesn't mean you don't know everything about the human body. Doesn't mean that you don't know how to lift weights. Doesn't mean you're not in shape. So it can go both ways. You could be uncertified. You could have a really shitty certification and be a genius trainer and be a wonderful trainer, be a great person, be a great motivator, be a great spotter. You have all the components of a great personal trainer. So I'm not trying to say that if you're not certified, you're crap. I'm just saying that there's no there's, it's hard to tell if you don't know what you're looking for in a trainer. If you don't know, and most people that get a personal trainer don't know about fitness, so they don't know what to look for. They don't know what makes a good trainer. They don't know what makes a good personal trainer. They don't know what a good certification is. Not only that, but they don't know that the certification doesn't necessarily mean they're a good or bad trainer. So it's really, and I'm not telling you there's a right or wrong answer. I'm just giving you the information that there are so many different aspects. It's not just black and white. It's not just, okay, you have a certification, you're a great trainer. Oh, you have a four-year degree dash. Oh, you have um, the CSCS and you have four other certifications. Oh, wow, you teach this and the other? You must be a great trainer. I could be a terrible person. I could be very negative. I could be insulting. And then people just don't want, they're not motivated. Personal trainer is more than just education. You can't be a brick wall. You have to have personality. So some people can be great, great group exercise instructors and be terrible trainers. Some, some people can be good trainers and can't teach multiple people at the same time. A group training dynamic is totally different than a one-on-one, -on -one, and vice versa. Not everyone is good um, is good training on every platform. So that's a certification. Anyone can be a personal trainer. Anyone can call themselves a personal trainer. It comes down to what the gym wants. If you go to LA Fitness, they might require one of these certifications. If you go to a 24-hour fitness, they might require one of these certifications. So you have different options. You have different things available. You can't just uh, you can't just you know walk in and be like, hey, I want to train. Okay, cool. They require you to have a certain certification, CPR certification. So, you know, it's not just like anyone and just, you know, it's not just like anyone can walk in. Don't worry about that at a big gym. They have a certification, but again, doesn't mean that they're good. That being said, there are certain certifications that are better than others. Uh, the top ones, if you're looking to get certified, the top certifications that you should be looking into is one from the NSCA, NASM, or the ACSM. Those are the top certifications. 
It doesn't mean the other ones aren't good. It just means that those are the top ones. They've been around the longest. They're respectable. They give out great information. And having that certification uh, is very prestigious, one of those certifications. The CSCS is the highest in the field generally uh, accepted. There are other ones out there that are a little more rare. Just because the price is higher doesn't mean it's better. Um, MPTI, I I'm, I'm sure it's decent. I'm sure it's decent. It hasn't been around that long, I don't think. I, I, don't think. Um, I don't know about NPTI in great detail, but it's definitely not a top, a top tier. It's not the same level as those other organizations. So you have ACSM and ASM that have, you know, big conferences, huge networks. NSCA is a massive, massive network. Uh, the reason for the NSCA and the CSCS certification is a higher level. Most uh, orthopedists, physical therapists, strength coaches for professional teams, most of the articles you'll see like in these sports magazines or men's health of this, you'll see CSCS at the end, that's a certified strength conditioning specialist. That person has a four-year degree, they have higher education. Again, doesn't necessarily mean that they're smart, doesn't mean they're a good trainer, doesn't mean they know that they're telling you the right information. I'm just describing. So NPTI, great. You could be a fantastic trainer and I'm sure I have that certification. I'm not too aware of the details of what they teach, but I do know, and I will recommend, and I'll tell you why, if you are looking, and because we're on the track of certification before we get into how the training industry works, um, if you're looking to be a personal trainer, I would highly recommend NASM. And NASM because you will learn the most, I guarantee it. You will learn the most about the human body, about kinesiology, about how the body works, about how the body functions, about how to create balance and decrease uh, pressure, strain around the joints. There are advanced certifications, there are corrective exercise. It's designed by a physical therapist, and that's what's most important, because most people need training and strength training combined with physical therapy and corrective exercise and compensation work. So it's very important to understand that concept. It's very um, important that the information that you're getting is quality and up to date. The NSCA tends to lag a little behind and be a little bit more highbrow, but most people with that have other education in combination with that. NASM is an entry-level certification, but it's very, very good. It's very, very good. And again, MPTI, I'm not trying to compare. I'm not saying, you know, apples and oranges. And a lot of these things, that's why I'm saying. Certifications are like apples and oranges. A lot of them are the same. All of these certifications will get you into the field, and most every gym will accept one of these certifications. That's my point is get properly educated. I don't care if you've been in the gym for a long time, you need to have that background of information. You need to know why you're doing certain things, you need to know how the body works. It will help your street knowledge. You might be in shape, you might have muscles in the gym, but then you can combine that with some book knowledge and understanding of how the body actually works and then that will help translate, okay? That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that one's good or bad. As I already said, it's kind of irrelevant if you're a quality personal trainer. These are just ways to get into the industry and high recommendations. And I don't know much about MPTI, and I'm definitely recommending NASM because I know for a fact that that's a top certification. I 100% put everything behind NASM. It's a great certification. It's a great certification. So if you're looking for one, NASM. All right, here we go. You have a certification now. You have a certification or you're looking for a personal trainer. Let's talk about having a certification. You have a certification, you're going to a gym. Most gyms in the fitness industry, personal training is a lot about sales. And I'm gonna kinda of talk about looking for a personal trainer. Personal training is a lot about sales and it's all about retention. So one of the hardest things about personal training is the retention. Training someone, exposing them to your craft, and then getting that repeat business and keeping them. So you're selling someone your product. So it's very important as a personal trainer to understand that you're delivering not just knowledge, not just exercise, you're delivering a personality, you're delivering a bond, you're delivering a partnership. And that partnership is super important. The partnership is super important because it's not just, okay, lift this, lift that. You're creating, you're selling a product that isn't guaranteed. And think about that for a moment. Take your time and think about these ideas. You're selling a product. If you go to Walmart and you want to buy a chair, you go to Ikea, you go to Bed Bath & Beyond, whatever, you buy a chair, you go there, you take your money, oh, I want this chair. You give the money, you get a chair. That's a transaction. That's a transaction, okay? You want something, you pay for it, boom, you have it. Personal training is different, fitness is different. 
and you're paying a good amount of money for it. You're paying 60 to hundred dollars for a session probably. And you're paying for a craft and you might get it if you do your part over the course of months or years. So there's no guarantee that you're getting these results anyway. There's no, res there's no guarantee that you're getting this product. It's up to you. So it's a partnership. It's a, it's a team effort. And it's unfair to a lot of trainers. What happens is, and there's so much information here, it's hard for me to cover every different aspect, but there's so much pressure on trainers to deliver results when a personal trainer might see a client for an hour three times a week. So that's like 2% of the entire week and the client is off drinking beer, eating pizza, slacking, not getting sleep, and they come in, I'm not getting results. And then they stop paying for training. When it's really their lazy ass that is not putting the effort in. It's the client's lazy ass that's not putting the effort in. What's up, Michael? How you doing, dude? Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Buscasaurus. So it's very important to understand that the trainer has a lot of pressure. The trainer has a lot of pressure to provide, to deliver results to a client. The trainer has a lot of pressure to deliver results to a client that might not be putting in the effort. If you're not, you're not, the client is out of the gym. If you go three times a week, three times a week for an hour, the client is not in your control for like 96, 97% of the time. How can the trainer be responsible for results for the client when the client is not even in the gym? When the client is not even in the gym 97% of the time. It's absolutely ludicrous. Trainers get a lot of shit, a lot of shit for not delivering results and they don't get paid and they work hard, okay? It could be the trainer's fault. The trainer could be not motivating enough. The trainer could be not motivating enough. The trainer could be giving poor programming or poor advice, but more often than not, the trainer gives guides. The trainer gives maybe nutritional guides or common ideas because trainers are not nutritionists. We have to get into that maybe another time. But trainers are, you know, it's possible the trainer's not giving good information, a good exercise, a good program design. It's possible. But if the average trainer is delivering average fitness to people that are undertrained, that's enough stimulation. It's the person and what they're doing outside the gym. Some people think they can go to the gym. Oh, I'll go to the gym three times a week and I'll see results. Maybe. Maybe. People that see results that I train, they're doing workouts on their own. They're doing programming. It depends on what they can afford. If they can afford me five days a week, then that's what they pay me. Most people can't afford that. Most people can't afford to pay me five days a week for training. Okay, I'm expensive, but doesn't mean it's not worth it, but I can be a guide. I do my online fitness coaching. My clients get a lot of effect and help and guides and accountability through the internet, through email, through text message, through video Skyping. So this is a aspect of that partnership, that partnership, the trainer has to deliver information. The trainer has to deliver information, but the client has to be aware of what the partnership is and what their uh, role is as a client. The client has to understand. The client has to understand what their responsibility is for their own health. If the client is not taking responsibility for it, then they're not gonna see results. Simple, simple. The client has to take responsibility. And most of you out there that might've had personal training that didn't work out, maybe you don't take enough responsibility for yourself that you didn't put the effort in, that you didn't actually put the effort in, that you didn't actually do go 100%. You can go 100% with your fitness, okay? It's up to the client. It's really up to the client. It's up to the client. Now, that being said, some of the other aspects. I'm gonna get into one other topic because there's so many I can go into and I will do this again. I want to go into different detail. Exercise in the gym. Many of you are on Instagram. Many of you are on YouTube and you're watching my videos. You're watching other people's videos and you're checking out all these different exercises, all these different things. And people, I see people in the gym and I had this rage, not this rage, but these people are doing these ridiculous exercises. Why are they doing ridiculous exercises? With the trainer, like just stupid stuff, like things with cables around their ankles and pulling their knee in and stuff. Things that I get might feel challenging. Some things that I understand with bands, with balls, with kettlebells. Most of this stuff is a ridiculous waste of time, and I'll tell you why. Variety is important. Too much variety in the body can't adapt to anything, okay? One of the principles behind CrossFit that is just complete bunk is that you can be good at everything, impossible. 
okay? You train everything, there's no way you'll be good at everything. You'll probably get hurt because you can't master any one skill. That's a huge problem, especially with fitness, and especially with people that are undertrained going into the program. So that's CrossFit, that's for another day, okay? You cannot be good at everything, which is why doctors, general practitioners, if there's something specific to the foot, where they send you? Foot doctor. Something specific to the heart, they send you to a heart specialist. There are specialists, there are people that are good at that one thing. Same thing with powerlifting, same thing with bodybuilding, same thing with triathlons, same thing with marathons, same thing with cyclists. You are a specific skill, okay? A triathlete will lose a marathon to a marathon runner. A marathon runner will lose a triathlon to a triathlete. A sprint triathlon, you know, let's say master, will lose in an Ironman. It's that simple. It's that simple. You specify your craft and you get better at it. You cannot be good at everything. That's why there's only a few people in history that have been good at two sports and play professional, like Deion Sanders, Bo Jackson. Very few people can do both because you, you practice all to perfect one sport. LeBron James, he still practices like a beast. You know, He's one of the best basketball players ever, but basketball player, he's not a celloist. He doesn't play the fucking violin. You know, He might play as well, but he's definitely not the best violinist in the world. He practices. It's specificity. So these exercises that are designed to deliver results. Most people in the gym, we know what they're going for. We know what they're going for. We're going for muscles, shape. The average person, when they're in the gym, you can, without even asking them, you know, oh, I wanna get in shape. We all have this common acceptance of what it means to be in shape, right? If you wanna be in shape, if you wanna be in shape, you know, if we both, all three of us, you know, Periscope and Busker, if we wanna be in shape, we know what we have to do. And we know it's hard work, but we know what we want. And I know what someone wants. When someone tells me, I wanna be in shape, I know what you want. I know what you want. I know you want, you know, biceps, you want abs, you want glutes, you want, you know, you want a certain look. We're, I'm aware of what that look is. Most of us want the same thing when we go to the gym. We're aware of what the common desire is in the gym. The exercises, the rift between these two concepts, the exercises are being delivered will not deliver most of these results. This jumping around, these crazy fancy exercises will not deliver the results that most people want, okay? It's hard work, they're tired, they leave famished, leave exhausted, but they're not gonna get the results that they want. And the reason for that is retention. It's attrition. It's the personal trainer and this idea that fitness is supposed to be fun. It's, I'll repeat that again, because that's, probably the most important thing I could say to you today and that you can understand if you have any interest in health and fitness. This idea that fitness is supposed to be fun. The idea that training to get the body that you want is supposed to be entertaining and fun. Kickboxing classes, Zumba classes, total body, CrossFit classes, this and the other. The idea that fitness should be fun. I wanna create a community. I wanna have fun. I wanna dance. That's entertainment. That's entertainment. You wanna have fun? Go watch a movie. You wanna have fun? Go to the fucking circus. If you want results, it's hard work, and you might enjoy it. You might enjoy the hard work. You might enjoy the results. When I go to the gym, what's fun about it? What's fun? I enjoy it but I wouldn't call it fun. It's hard work. I go there and I'll curl and it'll hurt like a motherfucker. I will go and I'll bench press and I'll push and my arms will be tight and it'll hurt and I'll do it again and I'll do this and I'll do it again and I'll do this and I'll do it again. It's repetitive, it's over and over again, it's not fun. I like the results, I enjoy it, I wouldn't call it fun. It's not entertainment. It's not entertainment. I'm not there, I love working out, but it's not entertainment. It's hard work. And this is why people don't see results. And I said this on Anchor. I said this on Anchor like uh, last night or the night before. This idea that fitness is supposed to be fun. This idea that you're supposed to have a good time when you work out. In my opinion, if you're having a good time, like fun, like entertainment, you're not, one, you're not working out hard enough and you're probably not getting the results you want. Or you're not doing, you know, you're not maxing out what, you're supposed, what, you, what you can, your capacity. Okay, super important, super important, super important concept. If you are having fun, if it's entertainment, if you're doing this nice, you know, total body, bar class, that's fine. I'm not saying you can't have entertainment. I'm not saying you can't do fitness type things for fun. But if you want results, stop thinking of one, food is not 
entertainment, food is a tool, and exercise, training is a tool. What you do in the gym is a tool. And if you want results, and if you want a certain effect, you have to think of it as a tool. You think of it as entertainment, and that's what you're gonna have. You're gonna have a fun little time, and you're gonna go home, and you're still gonna be overweight. You're still not gonna have the body you want. You're still not gonna have the results that you want. Genetics plays a role. Some of us aren't, you know, aren't meant to have certain bodies. No matter what you take, anabolics, you take steroids, no matter what you take, you're not gonna have a certain result. But a lot more of us are not getting the results that we want because you think it's fun. You think it's fun. You wanna have fun. You wanna have a good time. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that uh, that workout. Oh, it's, you know, oh my God, I don't like it. It burns too much or, oh, it was exhausting. And I don't know, I didn't like the music. You didn't like the music? Uh, okay, what the hell does that mean? I'm not motivated by the music. What if it works? What if the exercise works? You know, put headphones on, go work out, get out of the class. If you want really real results, get out of that group class. Start specifying to your body, start doing what you should do, not what 30 other people um, should maybe be doing. Group classes are okay for entertainment. You might see initial change. You're not gonna get exactly the body that you want nine times out of 10, 99 out of 100, 999 out of 1,000. I'm not saying you can't get results. Again, people, I'm not saying you can't get results from CrossFit. I'm not saying you can't get results from a group class. I'm not saying you can't get results from a treadmill, but you have to understand that's not part of a training program. The mentality of going into this as entertainment, the, the, the mentality that a trainer, that a personal trainer has to keep on changing things and make it so interesting so the client stays. At a high level, at a high sports level, or at a high level, Hold that question. At a high level where you know a professional trainer is training a bodybuilder or a sports athlete, there's this understanding. There's this understanding that I'm gonna have to do certain things that suck, it's gonna burn, it's not gonna be fun, but I'm gonna do it. Of course they're getting paid money. Of course they're getting paid money. But what does that matter? They're doing something to get better at a certain skill. You wanna get certain muscles, you wanna build up a certain way, then guess what? You gotta eat like A, you gotta train like B, and you gotta recover like C. Done. Is it fun? Who fucking cares? It's results, okay? Broadcasting live every day, I actually enjoy it, but it's hard work. It's hard work doing everything. It's hard work with content. It's hard work with, uh, with questions. It's hard work, because I, I, mean, I have a lot of stuff going on. I'm doing a lot of video editing, I'm doing podcasts, I'm on Busker, I'm on Periscope, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Anchor, I'm on SoundCloud. I am everywhere, my website. I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere times two. Snapchat, okay? So this is, and we're gonna take questions in a second. This is very important. When you're looking for a trainer, you gotta find someone that you mesh with and you have to understand if you have a good trainer or if you wanna be a trainer that you have to deliver results. You could be f entertaining, you could be a good guy, but you have to find a partnership with someone that understands that hard work is the only thing that's gonna get you results. Hard work is the only thing that's gonna get you results. If you think about it, it has to be entertaining. If you think about it, it has to add so much variety and do every little you know, f fashionable exercise or anything, thing, oh, let's make this bounce around, let's attach this to this, let's attach this to a rubber band and put it over my head and have it bounce up and down and do all this stuff on a BOSU ball, that's bullshit. That's bullshit trying to get your money, okay? And if you're paying for it as a client, you should know that most of that stuff is bullshit trying to entertain you. If you want a body, if you want, the the aesthetics, most of us want the aesthetics. That's why we work out, we want to look a certain way. Then you need to body build. And what that means is not to be juiced up and massive and blah, blah. That means to develop your muscles evenly and proportionally throughout your entire body. That's what bodybuilding is. That's the mistake, that's the misnomer, is that people think bodybuilding is to be, that's another whole nother topic. That's a daily soul. I'm gonna write that down. Bodybuilding, that's another topic coming up. Might be Sunday. Bodybuilding, what is bodybuilding? It's developing the muscles evenly throughout the entire body. I bodybuild. I don't take steroids, I'm not trying to be like, you know, 500 pounds, you know, lean and ripped and be on stage, but I bodybuild. If you bodybuild, you're developing every single muscle, inside, stabilized, outside, proportion, anterior deltoid, posterior deltoid, glutes, hamstrings, calves, forearms, everything, abdominals, everything is balanced evenly and proportionate. That's what bodybuilding is, you're building the body. Yes and no. Um, so that being said, I mean, so understand you have to train for your result. And most of you are not, most people in the gyms are not training for their result. You can click the B and click hearts in the bottom corner. Let me talk a little bit about Busker. I'm also on Busker and Busker is a really cool concept. It's like Periscope. It's better than Periscope. It's better. 
and it's a live streaming app where you can actually donate and support. You can actually tip people. You can purchase products within app. It's brand new. So check it out. B-U-S-K-E-R. It's for Apple only right now. iPad or iPhone. If you have an iPad, you can still download it. Just got to click iPad only apps or iPhone only apps and download it for your iPad. So I'm on Busker right now. So it's totally cool. And you can donate. You hook up your PayPal and credit card. You can isolate to. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the nice body comments. Let's open up to Q and A's. I had some questions. Any Q and A's about training, fitness? Let's open up. Try to let's get some questions on topic if we can. Uh, personal training. I can go over some other things. So yeah, that's some. That's a good rant. That's a good information about personal training. There's a lot more I can say about fitness in general, but make sure you're not doing too fancy. Hard work is hard work. Yes, I'm on Periscope right now. Uh, open books meow. <laughs> I'm on uh, Periscope right now. Yeah, I multi-stream. I multi-stream. I was doing Facebook Live for a while, but then got to pay for everything. People that follow me couldn't even see stuff. No roids, just rage. Amen. Periscope name is Swolnormous. Same across all platforms. Swolnormous. S-W-O-L-E-N-O-R-M-O-U-S. Check me out there. But stay on Busker. I'm not going anywhere. You're here. You know? So sexy. Ooh. All right. So more questions. How can I get rid of my man boobs and develop a nice, firm chest? Nutrition, hard work. Nutrition, hard work, diet, nutrition, eating better. And yes, I do some acting or modeling or I try to, but I'm, I'm open to it. Um, the, you know, in terms of developing, yeah, Busker is definitely nicer. Periscope is very rude and, you know, yeah, trolls will be coming. Yeah, Periscope is trashy in, in some ways, but you know, it's human nature. Uh, what kind of workouts are best? Keep it high intensity. Keep it like moderate weight. You know, just uh, keep the rest short and just pound it, man. Understand that if you have, quote, man boobs, you mean you have fat around your chest, uh, you can't spot reduce. You can't spot reduce fat. So if you're like, oh, I have fat around my abs. Let me just do more crunches. Not going to work. It, the body doesn't work like that. You have to create systemic. So if you want to develop your chest, um, you have to work your whole body work your whole body change your metabolism increase muscle mass over don't forget your legs super important and then your body will metabolize more fats at rest throughout the entire day any other questions i want to learn english cool i encourage that because then we can talk any other questions good stuff i'll stay on for a couple more minutes i'm going to end my podcast but stay on. I'm not ending. But thank you very much for joining this episode of the Daily Swole. Thank you so much for joining. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being here. Remember, YouTube, Swole Normous, every day at 12 noon Eastern Time. This is the Daily Swole number 14. You can watch it. I saved it on Periscope. It will be on YouTube within the next week. I think I'm up to 9 or 10 on YouTube. Audio, the SoundCloud, the podcast. This will be in podcast form the same day. Um, and I'm on Busker every single day at 12 noon Eastern time. Okay? Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Farewell. Take care. Peace out. All right. Open up for questions. Any other questions? That was just for podcasting. Okay? That was just the final for podcasting. So now we're just going to do some casual stuff. Keep it chill. Since when do you practice? When do I practice what? When do I practice what? What do you mean? Who's in here on Busker? Margo. Hey. I was going to say, you're probably new to Busker, but everyone's new to Busker. Musculation. About 12 years. 13 years. Takes a lot of time. Takes a lot of time. It won't happen overnight, especially naturally. So this idea that you can get in shape and build all this X, Y, and Z really fast, maybe some people genetic freaks, but it takes a long time. Yeah, I've been lifting for years. And I haven't always been trying to bulk, bulk, bulk. I mean, it's, it's exhausting eating heavy all the time. You get tired of working out all the time. I mean, yesterday I just elevated this desk so I could do like a standing, uh, I could do a standing desk because I've been sitting down more often. You know, doing this podcasting, doing all this video editing, and I can't stand sitting down too much longer. It's too much for the body. It's gonna start having like I'm gonna start having damage, you know, hip tight hips and everything like that. So 
so you can follow me on Snapchat. I've got a jet, but I'm following now. Yeah, you got it, man. So I'll, I mean, I post throughout the day, especially on Busker. I I roll things throughout the day, just really keep it really casual. So check out. Take care, man. Six feet to man boobs. Well, yeah, that's it's tough, man. The the man boobs. It's tough. It's tough because you can't spot reduce fat, and then you know certain areas depending on hormone imbalances if you're very overweight you might have some like hormone imbalances you know testosterone levels might be low and certain hormones that are high can store fat around the chest around the midsection so you could also get blood work done and see uh they'll make fun they'll make fun uh you can you know you can have hormone imbalances that you know tend to store fat around the around the chest around the midsection so that's always a challenge and some people will just genetically they're predisposed to that you that guy of home alone, Kevin. Okay, Macaulay Macaulay Culkin when he was like five. That's why Busker's better because you get these useless comments. <laughs> Just joking. Yeah, Periscope. Whatever. Periscope's cool. It's cool because you can find people on on on, on Periscope differently than you can. Um, yeah, so follow me here on Periscope. I will be here. I do some stuff in the car. What you used, steroid. No, I never used steroids. Um, so what you used, or if I used, no, I haven't. Um, and I don't recommend that anyone does, but you know, I don't think it should be illegal either. So that's another thing. Yeah, so thank you for joining. I appreciate it. Follow me here on Periscope. I do other Periscopes. I do Periscopes while I'm driving as well. It's a series called Driving While Gaining, and they're different than the ones on YouTube, on my YouTube channel at Soul Normus. Uh, those are different. Those are shot separately because Periscope video while I'm driving sometimes cuts out because I'm on my cellular service. So check it out. Follow me because I'll be doing some other Periscopes. Also on Busker, uh, Soul Normus, I do a lot of like... I wouldn't say intimate, but I do just like, you know, casual posting and stuff. It's a brand new uh, streaming app and we don't have a lot of the weirdness from Periscope. So check it out. It's for Apple. And I will see everyone tomorrow, if not other times. Definitely on Busker, there'll be other times. And I will see everyone tomorrow for the Daily Swole. Thank you for joining. Take care and I will see you all manana.